Peruvian authorities have recently unveiled a fresh image of a purported extraterrestrial being unearthed in Peru. A notable revelation in this instance is the identification of a metallic implant located within its neck. This development has sparked significant interest within the scientific community and among the public alike due to the potential implications it carries. The occurrence of an extraterrestrial being receiving an implant in Peru for the very first time has sparked a multitude of inquiries and uncertainties. This unprecedented event has led to a surge in curiosity and speculation within the scientific community and the public alike. The unveiling of the exhibition titled The Dried Beings of Nazca, an ancestral mystery took place on March 12th, marking the commencement of its showcase to the general public at the esteemed venue of the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History. The exhibition showcases a diverse assemblage of 12 mummies, originating from the Nazca culture, which was a prominent pre-Columbian society situated in the southern regions of Peru. The remarkable aspect of these mummies lies in their diminutive stature and the unique mummification practices employed. In contrast to their counterparts from different pre-Columbian societies, the Nazca people eschewed the traditional methods of excising internal organs or wrapping the remains in bandages for preservation. Instead, they purportedly relied on a clandestine method that encompassed the application of heat, pressure, and the utilization of specific botanical specimens. Recent research endeavors are currently underway to decipher the factors contributing to the demise of these individuals, tracing back their lineage and unveiling the methods employed in their mummification process. The utilization of advanced technologies such as DNA analysis, CT scans, and radiocarbon dating has paved the way for a deeper understanding of this age-old enigma. The preserved remains of the Nazca people offer a priceless heritage that provides insight into the ideologies, behaviors, and ceremonies of a bygone society. The showcase in Los Angeles offers a one-of-a-kind chance to delve deeper into this enigma and fully engage with the rich tapestry of the Nazca civilization. Delving into the depths of the Nazca culture through these desiccated beings not only enriches our understanding of ancient civilizations, but also sheds light on the intricate web of traditions and customs that shaped their existence. As fascination regarding the extraterrestrial remains intensified, scientists opted to conduct a range of rigorous scientific examinations on it, which included utilizing X-ray technology to unveil its internal arrangement and constituents. The X-ray scans uncovered astonishing specifics about the creature's physical structure, notably highlighting a strange metallic device implanted in its neck. This finding not only added to the enigma regarding the being's source and intent, but also raised profound questions about the nature of its existence and potential connections to otherworldly phenomena. Through meticulous analysis and thorough investigation, the researchers delved deeper into the intricate intricacies of the mysterious entity. The metallic implant discovered on the creature triggered various hypotheses regarding its source and potential ties to entities from beyond Earth. Speculations ranged from the implant acting as a means of tracking or communication, enabling the creature to interact with extraterrestrial entities or find its way in unfamiliar surroundings. Additionally, some theories delved into darker possibilities, suggesting the implant could be linked to mysterious experiments or clandestine manipulation by unidentified influences. This phenomenon has spurred intense scrutiny and debate within scientific communities, with researchers and experts exploring the depths of these conjectures to unravel the enigmatic connection between the creature and the enigmatic implant. Shedding light on a captivating mystery that continues to captivate minds worldwide. As information regarding the X-ray analysis became public, a wide array of individuals across social networking platforms expressed their opinions on the implications of the results and the authenticity of the unearthed extraterrestrial remains. The dissemination of the X-ray findings sparked a diverse range of reactions and discussions online. Proponents advocating the discovery of the alien body emphasized the credibility of the X-ray pictures by highlighting the detailed record-keeping and strict scientific procedures utilized throughout the investigation. They articulated that the thorough documentation and precise scientific methodology applied during the examination supported the authenticity of the findings. The contention revolved around the assertion that the existence of the metallic implant served as a significant indicator of extraterrestrial involvement, 
prompting a re-evaluation of established scientific frameworks and prompting a re-examination of our comprehension of the universe. The unearthing of the extraterrestrial cadaver in Peru, coupled with the unmasking of the metallic implant, carries significant repercussions for our comprehension of the cosmos and the potential existence of alien life forms. Should this find be validated, it has the potential to trigger a fundamental shift in our grasp of the universe, compelling us to reassess our relevance in the grand scheme of things and the plausibility of other sentient entities inhabiting the vast expanse of space. This revelation not only challenges our current beliefs, but also prompts a re-evaluation of our philosophical and scientific frameworks, raising profound questions about humanity's place in the universe and the prospect of encountering intelligent life beyond our planet. Speculation is rampant regarding the inception and objectives of the extraterrestrial entity, with a plethora of hypotheses spanning from visitors from distant galaxies to governmental trials. Certain theories posit that the being possibly descended to Earth following a UFO crash, whereas alternative viewpoints suggest it could be a bioengineered entity fabricated by sophisticated societies. The enduring enigma surrounding this alien presence has captivated minds worldwide, fueling debates and fostering a sense of intrigue. This man just translated what the forensic specialist said about the aliens during the Mexican UAP hearings. Before we carry on, it's important to point out this individual's credentials. His name is José de Jesús Zalque Benítez, and his rank is Lieutenant Commander. He has a master's degree in forensic medicine from the Military School of Health graduates of the Mexican Army. Specialization in National Security Intelligence from the prestigious National Institute of Public Administration. Diploma in Aerospace Medicine, awarded by the Mexican Air Force under the Ministry of National Defense. Diploma in Forensic Anthropology from the renowned National School of Anthropology and History. Aerospace Medicine Diploma from the Directorate General of Military Health, Ministry of National Defense. And in addition to his military service, he serves as an adjunct professor at both the National School of Anthropology and History and the University of London. They said the following. It is an honor for me to present on such a high platform the results of my analyses derived from the study of the anatomy of these non-human bodies. As a forensic doctor, in collaboration with the biologist José de la Cruz Rios, and based on the results of various scientific evidence, such as X-rays, computed tomography, three-dimensional reconstructions, macroscopic and microscopic analyses, histology, carbon-14, forensic anthropology, comparative anatomy and DNA analysis, which is the queen of evidence in forensic sciences for comparative studies, I can affirm that these bodies are not related to human beings. For this purpose, I will start with the description of the images that we will see next. Their bodies approximately 60 centimeters long, covered by a white powder that, through electron microscopy, we identify as diatom powder, which allows the desiccation of the bodies as well as the absence of the generation of bacteria, fungi, and cadaveric fauna. The presence of this dust allows the perfect conservation by desiccation of these bodies, causing a natural conservation process over time, which we were able to calculate by applying the carbon-14 test, which indicated and dated an average of 1,000 years old. This makes the place where these bodies were found an ideal place for their conservation and preservation by whoever or those who deposited them at this site in Peru. Entering the topic of anatomy, we can see that they have a humanoid structure that consists of a head, trunk, abdomen and limbs, which end in tridactyl hands and feet. The bone structure of the entire skeleton shows us perfect harmony and agreement between the joints. The final part of each bone fits perfectly with the bone that follows it, and the wear of these is also observed due to the movement of the specimen's own biomechanics, being very resistant bones, but very light and strong, similar to those of birds. The head is an element of particular interest, since it is large in its proportions compared to the body. However, it is a pneumatized skull, that is, with spaces that allow it to be very light but rigid and resistant, with a large intracranial cavity which evidence that it was a container for very large brain or neurological material. Likewise, we see that the spaces in the eye orbits are very large in size, which would allow a very wide stereoscopic vision for this specimen. It has very small nostrils and an oral cavity that, due to its jaw joint and absence of teeth, 
allows us to determine that its nutrition was by swallowing and not by chewing. The neck, in turn, is a long structure that joins the head in the middle floor of the skull, which is a rarity that does not occur in primate species, since the union is in the posterior floor through the foramen magnum and not in the middle, which is usually circular or ovoid in shape, being something unique since in these species it is rectangular and cubic in shape. This is consistent with the four or five cervical vertebrae, which are small in bone thickness, but have a very wide intervertebral disc, which makes it possible for this neck to be retractable, like that of turtles. In the thorax, we find a fork very similar to that of birds, which allows the shoulder joints to continue and have very wide mobility capabilities. In the thorax, we find that the ribs are complete and continuous, completely circular, until they join with the vertebral column, they have a very small space between them, being between 14 and 16 in number. In the abdomen, we can evidence the presence of three eggs that, thanks to the tomography, we were able to show at a millimetric level that there are oviducts with the presence of millimetric eggs. This means that they were in a continuous gestation process. In addition, it confirms 100% that they are biological and organic, since the process of replication or reproduction through these eggs and their development in the oviduct would be impossible to falsify. We can also observe, thanks to tomography, the traces of muscles, tendons, ligaments and blood vessels, as well as possible organs or organelles that would have to be defined in subsequent studies. Coming to the extremities, we can point out that there is a complete harmony and agreement between the joints and the wear and tear of the biomechanics of the specimen, which end in tridactyl hands and feet with five phalanges. This would allow them not to occupy the thumb as a position, but rather use three fingers in a wrapping manner to hold things. Here is one of the most outstanding and relevant peculiarities. They do not have carpal and tarsal bones. The phalanges are direct to the bones of the arm and forearm, in addition to ending in a kind of nail bed for the nail, and that observation of microscopes we found fingerprints, this would be impossible to replicate. These fingerprints are of particular interest, since most specimens on this planet have deep or circular footprints, and the fingerprints of these specimens are completely straight and horizontally linear. Another peculiarity is that some of these bodies have metal implants that are perfectly attached within the skin and towards the surface, making a very impressive biofunctional fusion. These implants are the alloy of various metals, among which osmium and cadmium stand out, which are currently used for satellite telecommunications. Finally, I will point out that the DNA analysis, after having been compared with more than one million registered species, we found that there is a significant difference between what is known and these bodies. These studies were carried out in various high-level institutions, both national and international, and the results gave evidence that 70% of the genetic material coincides with what is known, but there is a difference of 30%. If the human being, compared to primates, has a differentiation of less than 5%, and compared to bacteria, it has a differentiation of less than 15%. This would indicate that the difference found of more than 30% is something totally outside the parameter, and of what expected is foreign to what is described and known at this moment by human beings. These studies and results are published and available to anyone who likes to analyze them or continue them. We accept that there is still much to discover and we are open to the scientific community and the world joining efforts to define what we are facing and how far we can go as a result of collaboration in a scientific and academic study. In conclusion and for all the above, we can say that these bodies are from a non-human species that has irrefutable differences with what is described in the biology and taxonomy of the Darwinian species evolution tree, without a common or traceable predecessor, or without a descent and evolution still described. I can affirm then that these bodies are 100% real, organic and biological, that at the time they had life and are irrefutable evidence in themselves. We are facing the paradigm of describing a new species or the opportunity to accept that there has been contact with other non-human beings that were drawn and pointed out in the past in various cultures throughout the world, such as Peru, Egypt and Mexico, and that today we can accept their existence among and with us. Thank you very much. So, what do you make of this interesting report? 
Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.